Good afternoon, everyone, and how are you doing? I like to think of, of jazz as being the, the one element on this planet that helps me connect with creation, all of creation. And so this is uh, my most favorite subject to talk about, and especially historically, because what I want to do is to start you at the beginning. And I'm not going to assume that you know or assume that you don't know. I'm just going to put the information out there starting at the source material, and that is Africa and the blues. The blues is the most important aspect to jazz as it arrived in this country by Africans who were enslaved to work here in America. The blues, if we want to get technical, we could say that the blues uh, is, if you put it in a chord that you would play on the piano or on a guitar, you're talking about the dominant, subdominant, and dominant. And that would be the, the root of the chord, the fourth of the scale, and the fifth of the scale. So in C, we're talking about C, F, and G. And so that would be how we would start to move. But interestingly enough, the blues <clears throat> as we know it today, which is in the form of a 12 bar form, meaning that there are 12 bars to the form before it arrives back at the top where we start the whole form or the whole 12 bars over again. That basically became something that occurred back in 1914 when W.C. Handy wrote the song St. Louis Blues. And we've, I've got a videotape of that for you. But before I bring that up, I want to stress that in Africa, the blues basically is what we experience as a one chord event. In other words, if you're a musician, you would understand if I said F7, meaning you would play the F chord, and the F chord would be F, I'm sorry, F, A, F, A, uh, uh, C and E flat and that's a dominant chord so that chord would be the only chord that would support the blues in Africa but the 12 bar blues is what is what um, W.C. Handy wrote when he wrote the song St. Louis Blues after that, sometime later, Gershwin wrote a song similar which used the same harmony and the harmonic structure, which was called, um, I'm sorry, I'm, I lost the words here. It was, it was called Summertime. You've heard that song many times. So let me play this song for you so that you can hear W.C. Handy played the song, and also I want you to listen to the movement of the chords because later on in this chord, in this class, and other classes, I'm going to also let you know how those chords are moving in other songs, and I want you to be able to follow them. Okay, hold on one moment. <laughs> That was their Sullivan show, and <clears throat> I, I would expect that there are some of you that are, are in the audience that are familiar with Ed Sullivan. And so now, that was the first time that song, that particular song, that was the first time the 12 bar blues became accessible to all the other composers. And from that point on, the 12 bar form became something that was always used and still to this day to 
write and compose blues. But now before that, coming out of Africa, there were musicians that not only uh, played guitar or sang or what have you, but they also did not play the blues form in the form that we're accustomed to hearing. Sometimes their arrangements were uh, different in terms of the bars of the songs were maybe you have six bars in the song versus 12 bars. I'm going to play something for you from um, Lion Lemon Jefferson and uh, you can hear how uh, this, this song or his songs basically were sort of deeply rooted well, I would call them raw. So let's let's give it a listen to. She told me late last night, you don't here. need no mama Black no snake no. Mm -hmm. Yes, lime, lemon, Jefferson. And I have one more for you here that I want to play. And here. Uh, it's similar. We have Lead Belly, and I would consider all of this is coming out of the Mississippi Delta. The style came out of Mississippi. You may be saying, you know, that is blues, but where do the jazz come in? And so there, there are um, other areas because we have the Mississippi Delta, which birthed the blues. And then we have in that area also, further to the south, New Orleans or if you're from New Orleans, New Orleans. And there, you're only going to have the greatest benefit of merging of cultures because there are so many cultures there. You had the English, Spanish, French, Native American, African American. And when you put all of those together, you have what is later referred to as a hodgepodge of a subculture that becomes a dominant culture. And a lot of that music was like that, especially t towards the early part. And um, uh, we had uh, so much going on back then that there were a lot of musicians that were not trained. They were self-taught. And the music, of course, were the blues in the African-American community uh, and after it became known in a greater, wider um, environment of acceptance, it became called race music. And it was race music because basically this music was music that was mostly for African-Americans and white Americans did not listen to this music as much until later on because it became, um, it's a lively music. And we have to remember the blues is not always something that we would think of as uh, a, a sad sound. If you're sad, you sing the blues because there are happy blues. There are, you know, you can, you can sing the blues uh, when you've won the lottery. It, it's the blues. It's not a sad blues. You could sing the blues or hum the blues when you want to engage your relationship and your, your um, communication with God. And if you go back and think about it, the Baptist church, the Holy Church, um, 
sanctified church, those gospels and hymns and spirituals, they were all blues. But they were used to access the worshiping of God. The blues could be anything and it could support any kind of mood that you're in or enhance your mood if you're in the dumps of the dumps but also it helps you to express yourself and that's the most important point i want to make here is that the blues is a music and jazz that helps you to express yourself it's free and and that's why you notice that on the uh, the first song that there was there was uh, an, uh, a jagged tempo. And this person here that I'm going to play for you, uh, the pianist out of New Orleans, and he had a great impact upon this music. He wrote countless amount of songs. And there was a riff between him and some of the musicians of that time that lived in New Orleans. And one of the reasons why he left New Orleans was because he wanted to take this music somewhere else. He thought that he was uh, kind of held back in New Orleans playing this music and that it wasn't getting its proper benefit from folks who were listening to it. You have to remember that this music was also music that was played in bordellos, that was played in places of ill repute. A lot of the gigs were in these places. And sometimes folks wanted to move away from that. They wanted to move towards this music being played in concert halls. Uh, it, it reached that eventually, but before it did, it was in bars and taverns where alcohol was served, where women were selling their bodies, where drugs was flowing and all of that. And that's why in many cases, the jazz had a connotation of a music of the devil because of that. And so now it's different because this music, jazz, is played all over the world by cultures, other cultures, Asian cultures, European cultures, African cultures, South American cultures. All over the world, this music is heard and played. And there's been times when I've traveled to Europe doing tours and going through some small towns sometimes, and everybody come out to the concert. The town was bare. Everybody would come to the concert. Old folks, young folks, People would bring their cats, they would bring their dogs. I mean, it was a community affair. And that's basically goes back to what our music is all about in the first place because in Africa, this music was not separated by genre or by event. Music was a part of every event that occurred in the village, in the community. Music, dance, and all of the other arts, visual arts, was all a part of celebration or ceremonies. And it wasn't until we got over here and we started to separate these different factions of art and creation. Let's see if I can get this up for you. And so uh, many folks felt that they had to leave New Orleans to get this music out. And one of the first places that they went to was Chicago, then Kansas City, then New York. And that's why New York now is the, is the leader of, of the jazz industry because most of the jazz musicians wound up there and the composers. I'm not, doesn't seem like I'm able to get this, this up. And 
and uh, I can open this link here. And so uh, this music, uh, speaking of the people who were the purveyors of this music and the creators of it, Louis Armstrong and the, and the first trumpeter or cornetist that was attributed to creating this music was Buddy Bolden. And to this day, no one really knows what Bolden sounded like. There are no documented recordings of him. And if there are, they don't know where they are. But he's the one that had a sound so big that he could play on the banks of the river and you could hear him down the river or on the other side of the river. And they said he had a big, enormous sound. But he got his, his inspiration for creating this music from the churches. He went into the churches to hear what they were doing. And he took that and started to create based upon that inspiration. And of course, then along came people like Louis Armstrong and um, uh, uh, Sidney Bechet and uh, so many young people that took this music to other places via the riverboat. This music was played on the riverboat and that's how it moved up the Mississippi River. And after a time, like I said, it, it arrived in New York. The gangsters loved it in, in Chicago. And it, when it landed in Chicago, it was very popular because of its blues influence. And still Chicago is known on the map of the world as being a blues center. I, some of you may be from Chicago or know someone from Chicago that can sort of uh, feel the same way, would tell you the same thing, that there's a lot of blues in Chicago. And there are record companies that focus just on blues performers. And I think Chess Records came out of there. Uh, uh, the blues of, of, of the 1950s, Chuck Berry and uh, Fats Domino and folks who were a little richer, uh, folks who were back then singing this music, the blues. Now, in terms of uh, the blues as a, as, as a measurement of feeling and also a musical, a musical form that to this day is very prominent. You have the major blues and minor blues. You have rhythm and blues, which is a form of music that came out. It was called rhythm and blues back in the, in the 50s, later on to be called rock and roll, later on to be called fusion. And many of the rock and roll musicians were actually jazz musicians or well, the rhythm and blues musicians were jazz musicians, just like the musicians who played Motown studios, who played those records. Those are jazz musicians who were playing R&B. And so we had to find ourselves being able to, to get along in various genres playing this music just to make a living. And it, it turned out that we became our abilities to be able to, to play different kinds of music gave us a better economy. One night we're playing R&B, another night we're playing straight up and down jazz, another night we may be playing hard rock. It's, it's good to be able to, to play all those different kinds of forms of, 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 of this music that we call jazz.
there was a national band, Rwandan national band, that played before my band. And I noticed that they were playing the blues, but it was on one chord. And what I did was when we came on, I decided to put both bands together. But before I did, I showed the audience, I talked with the audience that what they had just experienced. And in order for me to prove it, I had them to play their blues. And then we just, as, a, as my band, what we did was we just played Excuse me, I'm trying to get this together here. We played the blues, and on my signal, we then went into the 12-bar blues. And that was, it just, it just opened up the gate for everyone to understand the origins of the blues. Because while they were playing the blues on one chord, we figured out the key that they were in, and then we, on, on, on signal, we went into the 12 bar blues and everyone in the audience just just clapped it was just it was it was very amazing it was amazing and and so i had folks afterwards to come up to me to tell me that they thought they knew the blues but they never thought that there was an association between the 12 bar blues or they didn't know about bars and you don't have to it's just that um, some people, when you hear, when they hear musicians like ourselves talk about bars and measures, they sort of pay attention. And then they start counting the bars, and then they can understand. Now, we're going to get into that uh, in the next few weeks, because this right now is just to open up the foundation so that we can move further in, 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 in order for you to understand and to grab the more complex forms, we have to start at its simplicity. And there are people on the planet today that feel that if, if, if you're not playing the blues, then you're not playing jazz. That's not true. It's not true at all. The bottom line is the blues is where we come together. If you meet those of us who are musicians and we meet and we, we've never met before, but we're, we're going to play a song together, usually the first song we're going to play is the blues because the blues sort of reflects to everyone what your feelings are, what, how deep your feelings go. You all have, uh, I, I, I want to thank you because you all have helped me to relax more because of course this is a nervous environment that we're working in. And especially as a speaker, I'm, I'm, I'm used to having folks in front of me where I can look at them, but, but all I see now is what, I, what you see, and it puts us close, but, you know, we're not breathing the same air. I got over my nervousness, and I look forward to the next time that we'll get together, and uh, I'll have even more information for you, because I can see now that you're, you're very exuberant and, and, and want to gain access to this music. I really appreciate you.